Uh, hey everybody, I'd like to welcome everybody to the Town Council Work Session of Monday, June the 18th, 2018. Welcome everyone. Uh, Joe, let's start out with the uh, policy for outside funding requests. All right, thank you, Mayor. Uh, what I did was, after uh, I guess it was two work sessions prior, we were talking about some type of criteria for outside agencies. So what I did was, through some of my research with other localities, I kind of put something together here for Council to digest and see if they have an appetite for some of it, none of it, or whatever. At least, I think this would be a good springboard for further conversations as we move forward. So uh, this is what I present as something that Council can at least uh, digest and comment on. Jake, I'll start out with you. Sure. I liked it, Joe. Uh, thanks for putting it together. Um, I think that um, the only thing that I think would probably help narrow this a little bit so that there isn't uh, a request from, you know, potentially, you know, Everyone. any, any not-for-profit is I wonder if there's a way to narrow the scope to actually say what we would consider funding. I know that's very general, um, but uh, are we going to say that anything is on the table, just bring, bring everything forward, or are we going to say that there's going to be some sort of level of scrutiny that the, the town will exercise uh, that will only, only consider funds for, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is to it, but I was wondering if there's a way to, to narrow what we would consider or not. And I know it's easier said than done. Okay, I'll have to do some more research. I didn't see anything in my initial research because I was really looking for some type of criteria point system that yeah. maybe somebody would have used. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I noticed you had know. a quantitative uh, or qualified uh, version down there. I was looking for a quantitative score right. system, but I guess reading through all this, that'd be pretty hard to do too. But I can look into that. I can look into that further by narrowing the scope. I will say that there is a uh, Virginia Code section, and I've got it here. I'll be glad to uh, share it. Um, um, that uh, provides the minimum criteria that local government can make donations uh, to uh, nonprofits. If you want to look at. It. Well, could we, or could we just simply say that we're only going to set aside ten thousand dollars a year, or fifteen thousand dollars a year, and we might end up getting a bunch of applications for that? But it's a set amount, and once it's gone, it's gone, and we're done. That's you know? one. That's one good idea. Set amount each year. Bill, your thoughts? Well, you already got one on there. The scholarship fund should fall in that category. I've said all along, my position has been if you bring us a grant that has some validity, uh, I don't mind matching seed money to accomplish something in the town and community, but uh, just everybody coming in doesn't make sense to me. Uh, I like that idea of uh, a set of my on a fund, that makes sense. I'm going to have to have more time to digest this a little further. I can't just sure. give you a mic. Well, that's what we're doing. We're just going to be giving the town managers more direction to take this because it definitely needs to be narrowed and some tweaking done with and the help of Doug and whoever Joe can get. Uh, but I, I truly believe that it falls in the, once we give guidelines, it falls in the, uh, in the town manager's pur purview to uh, determine what he's going to present to us. You know, he may get 15 applications and he only sees one. And some kind of criteria might be quite useful, by the way. Okay. Actually, I really like that um, mm -hmm. because then it keeps us out of the fray of being solicited by everybody, too. Well, we have two good bullet points already, so your suggestion and Bill's. Gene? Well, I like, I like what Jake said as far as how to mount. But the only thing that scares me, and again, like I said, we used to, we've done this in the past, years ago. I don't know why we did away with it, I don't remember, but uh, we used to help the House of Hope and three or four other places here in town every year. And, uh, I, I just think it's going to be more of an open, open doors policy than not. And if we, if we just put it out for everybody to come in that may want a, a few dollars or a lot of the dollars and that, I. I'm just really, in a way, I'm not 100% sold on, on the actual, uh, even putting it out there. Because we don't have, so far, we do only have one or two a year. And, and for them, I think we're opening the door to allow 
8, 10, 15, 20 to come in and, and request. Then how do you choose from those whatever number that comes in? So, you know, I'm I pretty much standard. If we do anything, I agree with what, what Jake said, but right now I'm at almost at point of not voting for it at all. Just let it cry like it is. Let it come in and let people, come. if they want it, we come in and then we'll look at each one on its own merits and go from there. Bill, you had another question? Yeah, I have a Sorry, guys. comment to Gene's. I agree with Gene, too, because what I, I would say is you might open the door, but if they get a, a contribution one year, that, that throws them out to next year. These people that keep coming back year after year after year, and expecting point, the same point, thing. Joe. And like more. Yeah. That's Those true. Three yeah, good bullets. I agree with it. You know, we're trying to narrow this down to be fair with everyone, but we don't want to get into the double taxation because back with the town, and I remember when we used to have the open door policy, come on in if you need money, we'll give you some if we have it. But everything got switched to the county, and the county funds the library, and the House of Hope, and all these other 501Cs. So we just want to be careful. John? I'm really receptive to Gene's point of view that I do think this could potentially cause us problems down the line, um, could open the door to a lot of problems. I think if we are going to move forward on this, a lot of the other suggestions, capping it annually would be one um, that's going to create an obligation to keep that in our budget. Um, I don't know if we set it in our policy as a hard cap numerically. Maybe in our policy we just tie it to whatever community engagement line council has at its disposal in the budget. And that's whatever the council sets it at that year. That's the total amount of funds that's going to be expended. But I also think that um, we also need to account for in-kind as well. So if we're doing some kind of in-kind something for a nonprofit, whether that's providing labor <coughs> or providing material, um, or even just our staff time to help them, uh, you know, the, the request that came before us was for in-kind um, off of the electric charges, you know, it wasn't a, a, a grant that we were going to be giving per se, but it was it was an in-kind uh, request that ended up saving them off of cost. It did, it did impact our budget sheet, but it wasn't a straight-up donation. Um, that's also something that really does need to be addressed. Gary, uh, I think it's a good idea. Well, it's very, uh, I, I agree with uh, Councilman Meza as far as uh, finding a the way to uh, cap it as far as the people, because I have a reservation of the number of people we're going to be getting. Um, still the reservations I have for it. Um, I think there, there should be a way, and it should be, for, you know, to benefit. Keep in mind that Joe's going to still be, this is going to be a work in progress. Yeah. Uh, our budget doesn't start to July the 1st, so actually we won't even probably use this until 2020 budget somewhere. And it should be kept in mind that you know all the benefits of it should should go for our citizens as a whole. Exactly. Morrison. How you doing? Your thoughts, sir. Yeah. Uh, I'm comfortable with what I've read, along with uh, the recommendations. I would just suggest taking an agile approach moving forward. Well, Joe sounds like three bullet points that, that people have set up was uh, setting an amount, having town managers make a determination of who. And the first time only, don't come back the second year. Somebody else has that. Jake? Yeah, I just wanted to uh, address what Gene said. Um, I think, again, I think this is a really good uh, criteria that's brought forward uh, by Joe because the, the problem I see if people come in and ask for money is there's essentially six objective or subjective opinions. And I feel like that that's been very difficult for me to vote in favor of something, especially I remember when council turned over and I was the new guy and everybody was like, yeah, we voted for this every year. There's an inordinate amount of pressure to say yes because we've done this every year instead of you know having something to fall back on as objective criteria where I could say, no, I don't, I don't think this meets the criteria, no. Um, and so that was my initial push for this to begin with is because you're, you're, Hollis, you're thinking from, and Gene, from all your guys' experience, but remember the new people coming on board don't have that to, uh, to fall back on. And so this, in my opinion, just gives a little bit of the, the bumper guards on both sides to help, sure, help the newer people. 
I don't know if, if you're thinking matching grants or are you talking about donations? Um, like, uh, like what uh, Councilman Conley said with the um, uh, in-kind and, um, and the, the grants. Okay. Basically soliciting the money for somebody's organization. Okay. There were actually four points. What's the next four points? Criteria. Okay. What's acceptable criteria? And you could add a fifth, Councilman Conley put up, would be matching okay. for and materials and, you know, help it, like we do for certain organizations like Memorial Day. And I reckon that's what I right. read in because your the, comments. Yeah, the wagon for dragons, really five, five the, the trolley rental right. was not, we didn't give them money. We Man. let them use the trolley. Um, but, we're paying a, the, but we're paying the money. It's an in-kind donation yeah. that we're giving them. Sure. Yeah, it's, not a, it's not a cash donation. Hmm. Right. Well, Joe, uh, if you could uh, work your way through this one. Hopefully we gave you enough information to feed on that you can maybe help you out. And I think Doug said he had something that maybe. So. All right, I'll, uh, I'll work on this to bring him back in about uh, yeah, but four to six know, weeks. Yeah, sure, because you know, we're not even going to be giving money until 20 So, you know, we really, we, we, we start our budget process in October. Yes. And one of the things when I was evaluating this whole thing is the cutoff date, you know, for for example, what we're experiencing this year, you know, we're getting requests and the budget's already signed, sealed, and delivered. Right. You know, so that was one of the things I was trying to actually pinpoint on some of those policies by saying if you want any type of assistance from the town, you know, that they got a cutoff date like the county does as well. There's some requirements so, on, nice. on the people that are coming, you know, to make sure that they do go to the county and ask for donations, just like all these other 501Cs. Okay. All right, sounds good, Joe. Everybody, anybody else have anything else to add to this? Before we move on. All right, Joint Towing Advisory Board appointments. All righty. Um, is this just kind of like information, Joe? That yeah, this is just pass along. What it is is we're finally getting the board established for the towing board. Uh, it, representing the board are three towing companies. Uh, me and Doug Stanley got together. Uh, we had four towing companies that submitted a, a interest in serving on the board, and. Um, so me and Doug got together and we chose um, Henderson <coughs> Towing, Keens Towing, and Tharps, uh, just for the simple fact they've been here in this community and we know them. And uh, so uh, the county will be voting on this um, tomorrow. And if council's okay with it, they'll vote on it Monday. Do we have that. to vote on it or? Yeah, you have to vote on according to okay. the total And then it board. just gets every, the county's taking care of this. We don't right. have to have anybody there for Well, it actually, or. it really runs by itself okay. because you have law enforcement representation, tow enforcement, and in one citizen. Okay. So. This is something I don't think council needs to get involved in. Something no, the only thing is, is just you basically have to approve the uh, board, okay. initial board setup. All right. Anybody have any questions? One Doug? thing I, uh, Jennifer and I were talking about this, and she raised an interesting point that when you have a meeting, you're going to have to have somebody take minutes. So well, the county, it's going to be on the county. It's right, and that might be in the bylaws, Doug. Okay. And I'll have to look at the bylaws to see if that's addressed. But I do think there's an establishment of the secretary in that. All right. But uh, don't quote me on that. I'll have to look that up. Just want to raise that, make sure. Well, that, that's what Doug and I were speaking of, not just minutes. As Doug was yes. saying, they have to notify the media of the meetings, the public Right, and that should be all incorporated in the bylaws. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, it, it's just as the Planning Commission meetings and the VAR. Yeah. When council appoints someone, it's a council meeting. Yeah. Um, it's just their representatives. So, so with us voting on it, it's going to be in the consent agenda, Joe? Yeah, it'll be under the consent okay. agenda. All right, moving on to the can I, CDBC. Can I ask a quick question? Sure, go ahead. Sorry. Um, who selects? Is the county select on the board? Or is the town select on the board? Is that a mutually agreed upon? It's mutually agreed upon. Me and Doug got together. We had only had four to, to pick for three. Oh, so there's an application process? Yeah, there was an application okay. process. Four companies expressed interest, and we, me and Doug picked the, those three. Perfect. Um, there's a uh, Virginia State Police on there, uh, somebody from the Front Royal PD, and the county. And then one citizen okay. gives it a seven board uh, towing board. Thank you. Anybody else? All right, let's move on to number three for the CDBG update and resolution. Director of Planning and Zoning, Jeremy. Thank you, Mayor, <coughs> members of council. 
Uh, so the purpose of this agenda item was uh, to keep you informed with uh, the CPTP project. So I'll give you a brief update on that. We also have a resolution and some documents that need approval. So we're getting real close to uh, getting to the point where we can actually have a contract with the state, uh, which should give us, once we have that, we'll have the ability to start uh, spending the money and uh, ramping up on the facade program and the other items that uh, you have previously approved. So uh, right now we're looking at a, we have a June 30th deadline with the state to finish uh, that long checklist of uh, things that we have to accomplish. Uh, and so uh, we're on track to do that. And uh, we're, actually have a, we're in the process today of setting up uh, a review meeting with the state at the end of the month on the 28th. Um, so things are looking good there. Uh, the uh, management team met uh, on June 5th went over uh, the documents you have in your packet. Uh, so the, the resolution that we need council to approve effectively gives uh, the town manager the authority to uh, sign off on uh, the necessary doc documents to implement the program, because there will be a, a series of those. Um, and then it also uh, says the council approves uh, the three documents in your packets. Uh, the first one is uh, the bylaws uh, for the facade advisory board, which uh, sets up uh, that board and uh, how they will review uh, prop grant applications from the property owners. And then there's the facade uh, improvement uh, program design. Uh, that is, again, related to the facade program, but sets up uh, the rules for that program and uh, the program income plan is the, uh, the third document so that would be in a probably an unlikely scenario where if the property owners decide to sell and not follow through uh, with their obligations which their obligations would be to keep a viable business in the property for five years and the way it would work uh, if you recall it would be set up uh, really a lien on the property and so a fifth of it would get written off each year as long as they abide by those the rules uh, that we set up in the contract with them. Um, but in, in the case where they sell the property and, um, and the person that's buying it doesn't want to participate for some reason, um, there might be payback that would have to occur and then that would be program income. That document base is a required document that says how we will put that money back into the, the, the overall program. Yes? Jeremy, remind me, is it a matching? So they have to match dollar for dollar in order to get that dollar on right. improvements? The dollar for dollar match. Okay. Uh, each building can go up to $15,000 uh, if they have a single storefront. They, some of them can go up to 20000 if they have multiple storefronts. It's $2,500 extra per storefront up to a maximum of 20. 20 total or 20 match? That's the grant amount that they would get. Okay. So they would have, if, if they want for the 20,000, so they, they qualify for that, then they would have to invest another 20,000. All right, thank you. Jeremy, going back to the lien issue, uh, if I own a business in two years, I decide to sell it. Uh, if that lien has been recorded, does that lien have to be satisfied before they can get an actual uh, a title without a cloud in order to sell it? It would, tr it would be able to transfer to the, the new purchaser, unless that purchaser uh, decides not to. And then that's where the so then program the lien, income would have to be paid be, back. That lien would be satisfied, a new lien would be placed on with the new owner. Or something to that effect. I don't know. It would, the yeah, the, the lien would remain in effect on the, the sale of the property. I just want to make sure that we're trying to protect, uh, you know, everything for the citizenry really in that relationship. In it's regards. almost an appreciation method, too. Is that the way I understood it? Yeah, the fifth for each year. So, so after five years, that? it would be written off. So that's why it would probably be very unlikely for someone not to want to continue the participation because it's only five years and they might want to have to pay anything. I just don't want to make sure that, you know, somebody doesn't get a free ride and then all of a sudden he sells and then nobody has to pay anything back or whatever they have to do in order to make sure that everybody's getting a fair share on the Main Street or wherever, wherever this has been done. All right, Jerry, I'll finish your presentation. Uh, so, uh, 
Those are the documents and the resolution that scheduled for the June 25th for your approval. We wanted to talk to you about it before actually just throwing it off the agenda. If there's any other questions, I'd be glad to answer them, but that's pretty This good. is pretty much a boilerplate contract, so. Uh, yeah, it the, you know, I mean, the resolution's just what I said, basically. Authorized uh, Joe to sign off on documents. And, uh, but we did the same thing in 1985 through the same block of execution when we did Main Street for the first time. We probably had some similar documents. Yeah. Anybody else any question? And again, this is a remind me question, um, but uh, the businesses that are going to have the opportunity to receive some of these funds have already submitted applications prior to us being awarded the funds. So in other words, if it's a new business that started tomorrow, the chances of them getting anything is going to be very slim. It depends on how it works out. Uh, we have 36, I believe, people that have signed up. You know, it's, we're going to meet with them individually. and. Um, it could be that half of them aren't ready to do anything that they, they sign the document, but you know, when it comes down to it, they cannot be ready. And so that may allow us to do more people that have signed up on the tail end. But, but so if I were if I were the first person to sign up, does that mean anything? Uh, well, we did say that we when we were going through the application process, that first group of people that signed up, they'll be given the first book. Okay. But if they can't match, then you're going to want to the next person. Correct. Okay. Anybody else? I'd just like to, to say one thing. Uh, we need to keep this on staff level uh, committees. Doug, did you have some concerns if we appointed committee members then that would create a lot of extra work that we don't need to create? Yes, you do. If everybody's okay with keeping this on staff level, let them do their own committee, whatever choosing. Or, okay. Why, why, why do you say that? So I, I didn't quite follow. Not, I'm, not, I'm not advocating for more work. But I'm, Doug, would you explain it to Jake? Well, uh, the more town council gets involved, the more it becomes a town council meeting, and, and the more it triggers um, uh, the press uh, having to be notified. And so if you keep it on a staff level, uh, the meetings can be done at a staff level as opposed to having uh, uh, being a town council meeting. Um, and a uh, requirement of uh, uh, press. Minutes taken and yeah. other such. Like yeah. we would have to have somebody. Minutes being taken and the, uh, um, having uh, the meetings televised and so on and so forth. Would there be any advantage of having <coughs> a council member there? Uh, you're welcome to be there. <coughs> yeah, it's open to the. It's no, open I got to that. But I think what we're talking about is whether or not council appoints the members to that body. If it's a council appointed body, it acts more like Triggers. our, our um, planning commission or any other council appointed committees. Right, gotcha. And I'm correct me if I'm wrong, that also includes like advertising in advance that the meeting is right. going to occur, making sure that, that everything is entered into the public Creates record. That creates a, a, a lot of more activity as far as staff goes. So who are the appointed members then? That's up to staff to take care of that. They'll find whoever wants to be on the committee. We have established those, I can send you a list. The appoint, who's going to be, so what you're saying is that the town manager is going to be appointing? Staff and, and I guess we, Joe and, and uh, Jeremy, is that correct, Joe? Yeah, that's my understanding. Or you'll put a lot of pressure on Jeremy to, since he works with these that's folks. Okay. okay. And keep in mind, Jake, too, the committee doesn't make decisions that we would have to literally make any any executive direction. No, no, I, I'm okay with that. I just didn't. Uh, and the committees are open to the public. And I didn't see like that. Um,
uh, liaison committee meeting items for July meeting. Anybody want to add, take away? Um, Mr. Mayor, if I remember correctly, the uh, inspection sticker issue has since been resolved on our end. That's something that could probably be removed by number seven. Joe, number seven? Yeah. Thank you. What about you? Ten, joint towing board? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, we'll be. Well, we'll keep it on and. Um, because yeah, this this is kind of first step, but we well, have really. Well, it's just Monday night if we're going to go ahead and call somebody. Well, there's still information that we need to keep. Okay, it's fine. I just, just you know, county's just taking care of it, but we need to stay in the loop, and that's one way we can stay in the loop too. Yeah. Anybody need to add anything? Well, uh, number five. Well, not add, but um, number five. I'm wondering, maybe that's done. That's, that's done. That's so completed. That and you've given that report, and I've given it a report to death of the committees. Okay, we'll take off five. It's always good to have Warren County in town projects. I know we get kind of like a redundancy of reports when Doug comes and lets us know, but it's good to keep. All right, who's going to join me and where are we going to meet? It is at the county building. Okay. And I have. Councilman Gillespie down. Okay. So correct me if, if they're remembering differently. It's been so long, but that's well, who I have. Well, say that. <laughs> and these are every three months, correct? That's what I okay. have. Okay. You haven't been to one yet, have you? Oh, you have? Bill, have you been Back to one? Winter. Okay, yeah, I guess. I if guess you it's can't Gillespie. Make it, yeah. Just let me know, and I'll try to wrangle up someone else. There's always kind people like Councilman Seelock that will fill in for you. He likes it. Yeah, but the only my goal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, uh, wrap it up for tonight for Council Discussion Gold. Anybody have any goals? Jacob. Two, please. Um, Two fold. Both, both I know, kind of sensitive. Um, on our May 21st meeting, we talked about the capital projects, um, and I just wanted to, you have to answer now, uh, Joe, but. Um, Wanted to know uh, if we're going to have BJ come back and talk about the um, available funds or not in the next couple months or month or something. Yeah, like actually, um, we were trying to make that happen tonight. So right now we're pushing it to the next work session. We've run into a little hiccup with some numbers, and we're trying to verify everything that we present very okay. accurate numbers. But it's it's on the cusp of, of to coming back to you as soon as we can get our numbers straight. Perfect. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. You got two. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, correct. I just remember we just kind of left that as uh, we're going to get on another agenda, so I was just double checking on it. Um, the other thing, um, I guess I'm kind of out of the loop, but I mean, um, I was wondering if we're going to be able to um, have a discussion as council about the uh, news article of the EDA um, or get an update on that um, at some point. Uh, I don't know what we would discuss. Um, I mean, it's Kind of, I would think it's kind of premature. Uh, charges have been filed or whatever, but I mean, it's no, it hasn't been charged. So at this at this point, does anybody else uh, want to chime in on that? I mean, I I don't I don't know what to discuss because it's just you know okay. it's kind of like not being found guilty until guilty or something like that. Well, since we're not involved with EDA, yeah, in dir directly. I think Gene, did we leave it the last time that if any individual council member wanted to speak with Mr. McDonald? Oh yeah, yeah, and you yeah. Go I think that would be probably you be, go. you know, that way you can talk person one on one. Uh, Bill, is that good advice? Have one on one with the EDA? I mean, we're not. Yeah, we're we're a sponsor of the EDA, but the EDA is a separate entity. County board and us, they actually do work for us, but they're well, a separate we tier one. Except how that goes, um, and then talk about it later. I don't think that it is. Uh, I don't think that we're completely removed, as you're suggesting, because the projects are um, projects that are well, that's, happening. That's correct. Yeah, they're, like that, they're so. taking care of our projects. Yeah. And so um, that's fine. Okay. Gary, I was wondering if we had the meeting with Winchester City. Come on. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. 
Anybody? Well, yeah, I do, I do. Oh, you do? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Just shut him right down, Lef. Uh, going, going back to the Chrysler Road Bridge, uh, how much holdup do we have on that rain? Uh, is it still tracking okay? Yeah, or? they're still on schedule. I don't Every think day. that rain well, slowed them down at all. I mean, they moved, I just in, they moved in day one and started removing the decking and everything, and they, they're hitting it hard. Good. I'm real impressed with them. Bill? Great. i got two comments. Crosswalk safety, I don't know if you all notice, but I have the painting of the crosswalks, there the, all that is really showing some results. I start, I'm starting to see people crossing with cars stopping. We still have some issues, we're working hard on that. The chief, the town manager, and staff, there's gonna, we'll come out with a recommendation here shortly uh, for improvements. The second thing, I got a letter from uh, a citizen or an email, and he recognizes the work that's being done on the crosswalks, and he's very appreciative. The second thing that he brings up, and, and I don't know the validity of it, but he's a, a cyclist, and he likes the, the way we've got things looping around, but the Kaiser Road bridge being out has no crossover for cyclists or pedestrians so we went to a lot of effort to put you know uh, a walking path or cy cycles path and now they have no way to get across well they have to go yeah. down to south yeah. so commerce I, I just yeah. bring it i just bring it up yeah. yeah there's no way to cross this bridge well i think there's what one. he was suggesting could they have is there a, a wooden path that could be put across this thing on a temporary basis? By the time we went and did a work session and got all the prices and did the work, the bridge would be done before it got done. <laughs> I would hope so. <laughs> Not to be sarcastic, Bill. But all right, all right. I, I'm just bringing the concern. Yeah, that, that question has been brought before me, too, and, and it was pretty much decided when you come down Chrysler going to uh, shop and save that you would go down to uh, South Street and go across the bridge and come back up on the other side. So. Anybody else? I do have one. Yes, um, John. Jill, where do we stand on the radios for the police department? Well, I don't want to keep um, my pulse on that one. Let me give the chief give you an update. Chief? I'm actually hoping to uh, have uh, some representatives from the, from the uh, uh, company that we're dealing with at the July 16th work, work session. So we'll be able to answer a whole lot more questions yes. then. We're still working on it. We had them uh, had a meeting with them last week, um, so that's that's the date that we're kind of shooting at. Uh, I'm going to be coordinating with the town manager to get to get us on a work session for hopefully for July 16th. Thank you, thank you, Chief. Um, yeah, sorry, that's all right. Just okay. We, hey, we have. Plenty we, of yeah, I was going to say this is the first time. Um, I was just curious if we're here. Um, Councilman Sealock has mentioned a couple times that it's going to be kind of costly for the co crosswalk initiatives and paint and stuff. And I was wondering if we have the, the total cost of that and what's going on because I agree it's a really important initiative, but I'm not going to lie, the more we more effort we put into it and then the more I'm noticing, I was coming home today on 340 Shenandoah, North Shenandoah, the mother and baby was standing right out in the middle of the road with their baby uh, right across from um, 17th Street and it just frustrates me because we're spending, it seemingly we're going to be spending a lot of money um, on these initiatives and I don't know that that's going to stop behavior, uh, particularly off of North Shenandoah. And then again, we had the accident on um, what, North Royal? South Royal. South Royal. Mm -hmm. And um, I went up and down that street last weekend so many times and almost every time somebody is going across at a different spot. And like, I'd never seen anybody use the crosswalk. I see them cross the road at the most inopportune time. Um, Chief, is that still under investigation? The one where the cyclist supposedly came off the sidewalk and got ran over? Or is that, that it, still? It's, it's, still, it's still active, but okay. I mean, it's, it's pretty much the investigation part is pretty much Okay. Yeah, I, know, I, I see, and, and I think all councilmen and citizens see it all the time, that all kinds of stuff's going on. And we're putting in all these trails for people to get out and walk, and we're prompting them to get out of the house and start walking and you know maybe we're putting them in danger so. well I guess uh, to my point of the North Shenandoah 
so uh, I don't know what the solution is there, but we can put all the crosswalks and stoplights in up and uh, further up all day long, and unless something goes in around those hotels, they're just going to keep. Bill, can you fill us there. in on that? Where your committee is? Committee is at? Or Joe? I think we're ready, Joe. Yeah, we'll I think we'll, we can discuss it. You know, at a work session. high level, and then next work session, bring it, bring okay. in the paperwork. Yeah, I, I don't have to open that up now. I mean, yeah, yeah, well, up. yeah, we Later. wouldn't have it, but yeah, yeah, there's something going on. And, and but we have worked the, with Bill and the committee. We have worked out a, a really good solution for uh, North Shenandoah. Okay. I think uh, we've spent you look, somewhere around 100,000 so far. No, we're uh, going to be. Uh, we have another meeting Wednesday, and that's where I want to confirm all the prices and everything. And about we have prior spent last year. Oh yeah, we probably we spent 70 to 90 thousand doing yeah, the crosswalks, but there is something that we've worked to design. It's called a mid-block crossing that will be allow for pedestrians to cross, and it will actually stop the flow of traffic. And since it's kind of like a traffic light, but it's only activated by pedestrians in itself, and uh, and um, so that's what we're looking at, and that is a good solution for that area. It's really about the only solution right now for that area. Uh, it does have a price tag, and and that's where we were going to be coming back to try to fund that. Well, what made me think about that is the ordinance on the jaywalking, um, and so knowing that that's going to have a hefty price tag, you know, makes it a little bit more palatable for going to enforce jaywalking um, because the monies we're spending. You also things. have to remember this committee looked at five steps in this thing, and enforcement being the final <laughs> phase. We have we have pushed strongly education. You see the signs up. You see us going on radio. Uh, some of the newspapers and different people I will be approaching for more education piece. Before the chief can do anything enforcement wise, that's why this jay jaywalking thing was initiated. Uh, he has some real concerns about you know pushing uh, ticketing someone without some kind of ordinance to cover what's and we all see it. I hear you you complain about that, but I also see people in the middle of the crosswalk that people in vehicles don't stop either. So I've seen it all, just like you. Yeah. But if we don't do anything, what is what is the price of a life? You know, that's what I keep thinking about. You know, I know in manufacturing, everything came to a halt if you had a fatality until you resolved and came up with a plan of action. And that's what we're trying to do on this committee. We can't afford to have fatalities in this community with pedestrians. I, I agree with that. We also can't put a crosswalk at every bend and curve right. throughout Front Well. And we and understand. I that. don't think uh, some of the state codes that we've looked at does not recommend that anyway. Anyone else? So, how are we making out on Main Street for construction? They're moving in Monday. Yesterday, today, or they, last yeah. week? Um, we had a pre-con on Friday. They mobilized today. Okay. Started construction today. We're going to let them mobilize and get started. And then at our first uh, first progress meeting, we'll start sitting down and looking at the schedule and stuff like that. you have anything to bring to the table? Any information you want to share? Anything? Nothing? Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. This meeting is adjourned.